My guest today is Scott Hanselman. Scott, how are you, sir? I'm very well. Good to see you, sir. It's been a Good. while. It has been a while, and uh, you've been busy. I, I know you've been busy. <laughs> I'm really grateful for the time that you're spending here because I actually wrote this down. I have a, I have a Hanselman list right here. You've got uh -oh. your blog. You've got your podcast, Hansel Minutes, Azure Friday, computer stuff they don't teach you, mm -hmm. all your public speaking, all of your social media, your blue check marks, um, the, <laughs> your day job, you're a PM at Microsoft. I was going to uh, say, none of that actually is my job, which yeah, is Yeah, um, the learning new technology. So just before we start recording, you taught me a thing about uh, technology. Thank you for that. And, and you're a husband and a father. How do you do it? What's your secret? How can I be more Scott-like? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, you should be as David-like as you possibly can. <laughs> In this regard. Um, I think it's just about intentionality. Uh, I was talking to some interns earlier this week and trying to explain to them about uh, living your life by default versus living it intentionally. Like, you know how you just like lose a couple of hours watching a show? That's fine. Sure. You know, you binge on a show. That's okay, and sometimes that's healthy, and it feeds your spirit, and you're like, yeah, I watched three hours or whatever on Netflix. When that becomes a problem is when you lose maybe four, five, six hours, and then you, at the same time, are sad or frustrated because you didn't get something done. Right. You need to recharge, and it's okay to sit on your butt and watch TV. That's the thing that's healthy. Like, wasting time is good if it's intentional. The challenge is, is I've got a thing to do that I really want to do that's a productive thing, and I'm also wasting time, and the time just goes by. And oftentimes people find themselves saying, I wish I had another hour in the day, you know? I wish I had 26 hours. Yeah. Well, what you're really saying is, I need two more hours. So where would you get those? So a great example is, I just got uh, Super Mario on the Switch, just got re-released, so I'm like, I'm going to play Super Mario. I'm really excited about this. Mm -hmm. But then I had a moment of inspiration. I wanted to do a video for my YouTube. So I have a choice there. Now, if I stop for a second, and rather than just letting it happen, I said, huh, okay, I really want to play this game, but I also really want to do this YouTube. I'm going to make a conscious decision. I'm going to play the game for a half an hour. I set a timer. I played it. I time boxed it. And then I said, now I'm going to do this YouTube. And I spent 90 minutes and I did my YouTube. So rather than burning two hours on this game, which would have been easy, the time would have just shot by. Mm -hmm. I consciously time boxed it and got to do both things. Maybe it wasn't optimal, maybe I could have spent more time on the YouTube or spent more time on the game, but I didn't just let it happen. I didn't just let right. time go by. I boxed it up and that allowed me to at least feel like I was in control in some way. So you do so, a lot of that. You, the, you plan your day, you plan your week, you decide to the hour, maybe even to the no, that's a good, no. that's a good question. So I don't want to, I'm not trying to propose that level of intensity. Like if that makes you happy, you should do that. It's less about the planning your, your days to the minute. It's more about being in the moment as work needs to get done and saying, is the thing I'm doing right now, the thing I need to be doing right now? Because hmm. the biggest, the biggest control that we have, the biggest thing we can do to take control of our life is to say no. So I said, no, I'm not going to play that video game right now because I value this other thing I want to do. And this is important. This isn't about saying, I want you to be more productive. You should start saying no to fun stuff. Right. It's about accepting in the moment that the fun thing is what I'm going to do today. And the work thing is what I'm going to do right now. It's about um, thinking about like days a little bit at a time trying to be more in the present like right now I actually have on my calendar at 3.30 a two hour appointment called focus time hmm. like when was the last time you ever just made a meeting with yourself right to just sit and think about your strategies and look at your week and things like that um, you know like you and I we're running late that's okay right. but we got value out of it and we had a fun sure conversation about you know video production and stuff like that. Um, that's not a bad thing and it doesn't cascade or ruin everything. Now I just need to look at my meeting and find a half an hour, look at my day rather, find a half an hour somewhere that I can say no to because I traded 
our fun conversation about video with whatever future 30 minutes I need to go and delete. Oh, I appreciate that. I came out of the so way into that it's, deal. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's a joy. But the, the, the point being is I'm not just letting the, the day happen, if that makes yeah. sense. I, I kind of do things like that. I mean, I do start my day with a list, or so usually I end the day with a list of things that I want to get done that day mm -hmm. and some uh, idea of priority of those things. And exactly. uh, I don't always put that time box on it that you're talking about, but is that, is that something you do? Are you a list maker like I am? Oh, yeah. I love the uh, the to-do application, Microsoft To-Do. Oh, here's um, oh here's my application. It's right here. It's, uh, oh, this device IT. interfaces with There's this. Nothing uh, like that. It's very high resolution. <laughs> There's um, I wrote an article once called Sync to Paper, where if you're really, really overwhelmed, and I do this a lot, if I just get completely frustrated with life, you got to get a piece of paper and a pencil and just write down what you got to do, because yeah. digital isn't always it. But what I like about the Microsoft To Do is rather than this giant pile of things to do, there's a pile of things you could do, and then you add them to your day. And there's a section that's called My Day. So uh -huh. I've got about 70 or 76 items on my on my to-do list right now. I've got 13 important, 12 planned, and 50 flagged emails. I can go to that pool and I can say, add to my day, add to my day, add to my day. And what you want to do is make your day, you know, three to five things. Some amount that's reasonable. Hmm. Not an overwhelming 30 things I have to do today. I, but, uh, that's a challenge, yes. <laughs> that's a challenge, uh -huh. right? Yeah, I do. I think we're on the same page. I, although I'm not using tech for that, I have I have Ooh. that long list, and that's, that's usually that's actually a, a text file in, yep. in a notepad, and then I copy off of that the things that I want. Yeah, that I to want your to day. Right. So then your piece of paper is your my day. My day stuff. with a couple of stretch goals at the end. You know, mm -hmm. exactly my, like this video right here. I don't have to edit it today. I don't, but I'll probably put it on the list tomorrow. Yeah. and it might not get done till next week. Uh, there's a really great uh, productivity guru, J.D. Meyer, who works for Microsoft, who has a website called Getting Results. And he talks about the importance of having a plan for Monday that he calls Monday Vision. Hmm. And then that's your vision for the week. So Monday morning, 9 a.m., you sit down, you go, what's, what's a great week going to look like? How can I optimize this week for, for happiness, for productivity? And then on Friday at 4 o'clock, as you're winding up your week, he calls it Friday Reflection. What went well this week? So you have a little opening meeting for yourself at the beginning of the week and a little closing meeting. Oh, I like that. We're doing that on our project. Not, not for personal, but not for well, we're doing, but, uh, what went well on this project. Is, uh, exactly. I'm sure it's part of some methodology somewhere. But. Well, what's great about that is that isn't it interesting that we spend so much time trying to scrum projects and optimize Agile, and, but we never do that for ourselves. If we should, if we would apply that level of not rigor but intentionality uh, to our own lives, we might be, you know, a little happier and a little bit more focused. Good point. I've actually seen you speak a couple of times on this topic. I know you have a product. I forgot the title of it, but you talk about productivity. Mm -hmm. And I, one of the things that stood out to me was this idea to. Uh, I'll paraphrase: the uh, give your, yourself permission not to do to do things. You know, yep. Drop things from your list. Uh, you, you referred to psychic weight of those undone tasks. To talk about that a little bit. Yeah, like I was talking about this yesterday. Uh, I One of these days, I'm going to retire and watch The Wire, you know, HBO's The Wire. <laughs> but it's seven seasons, like 13 yeah. episodes. It's like, you know, it's like 80 hours of TV. I've never seen it. <laughs> I've never seen it either, right? And I'm sure that I, you know, it's it's a it's a cultural touchstone and clearly one of the greatest television shows of all time. But it's not what I need to be doing right now, so it's in my backlist. But is it pressing down on me? Is it is it psychic weight that is like, oh man, I got to put the kids down early tonight and really focus and finish off seasons four? <laughs> you know, uh, I, you know, I'm a little bummed that I I missed out like in the last season of Dexter and the last season of Game of Thrones. But I'm told that they were lousy seasons, so <laughs> I'm gonna accept that they were lousy seasons, and that's okay. So then when you release that that from your brain I'm just I don't mind that I'm not gonna ever see that right now then the weight doesn't press down on me so much uh, that makes sense I, that actually is one of the reasons why I write things on paper is it gives me my brain permission to forget and not stress about them that is that the I, whole point about having a system of planning is you don't want that 20 you know when you go to task manager and you look at the CPU and there's like something called system and it's like system, 20%. What 
that's that's not a thing. Well, that's <laughs> the system, right? Like we have yeah. that in the back of our head. Twenty percent of our CPU is being used up, and if you can just write it down and in, in a trusted source, you're giving your whole body, not just your brain, but your body, permission to not worry about that because it'll be it'll be there. It's on the paper. You'll find it. Uh, interesting. Uh, one of the challenges that I have is interruptions. I've got, uh, well, I, I have less of them now because I'm alone in this room, but I, uh, but even still, uh, text messages, emails, um, uh, interesting tweets, <laughs> uh, things that just kind of invade me and they, they sort of pull to me. They pull my attention away from what I'm supposed to be focused on. Uh, yeah. How do you deal with that? Well, so you just described three things, tweets, emails, um, what was the other one? Uh, text oh, messages. Oh, text messages. It could be a team message, and it's a message, so, whatever. So each one of those pops up a toast, like a little toast that pops up. Yep. You gave your computer and that application permission to pop that toast. So what we never do is we never go to our phones and go to into notifications and go down to the list of all the different apps you've got and turn off their permission to give you notifications. There's no requirement that you have to have Teams say that it's allowed to bother you. My phone's on silent. I've got my Teams available, but I've got my quiet hours scheduled. So I can go into Teams and say, from these hours to these hours, do not bother me. Um, go into settings if you have an iPhone and literally shut off each individual app. If you're not getting value from an interruption, then why did you allow it to turn your head? To because look it at might it? be valuable. I won't know until I look at if it, it if it's if valuable. It, if, if it was valuable, they would, they would do something more dramatic to get your attention. Uh -huh. They would call you. They would burst in. If the house were on fire, <laughs> the, phone, the phone would ring. It is very unlikely that, that the, the life-changing thing that needs to happen would come to you as a piece of toast in the middle of, you know, BuzzFeed's 15 ways to bake bread, you know, like, <laughs> like think about that. Like all of these notifications are done at the same level. So yeah. a text, a text from your family, BuzzFeed, you won't believe what Prince Harry did. And an email from Bill Gates are literally just items in a list. Yep. And your brain is supposed to sort those. No. So remove all the stuff that isn't Bill Gates emailing you or your family emailing you. And uh, and I've actually set up like separate t uh, text noises for my wife and my kids. So my phone beeps and vibrates differently if my wife texts me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? Like you set up the important people in your life. The people that have permission to actually interrupt you. The people who have permission to interrupt you and then you hide everything else. Hmm. Um, talk a little about uh, multitasking. Is that a good thing? <laughs> no. So I don't, I believe. <laughs> I suspected multi that would be the answer. <laughs> uh, um, I believe that we are single threaded people. There is a background thread, which is your subconscious. And that's the one that solves computer problems while you uh, shower. You know, when okay. you go for a walk and you're like, oh, and then you solve the problem. But um, yeah, multitasking is, is, a, is a lie, in my opinion. And uh, the optimal number of threads in any system is one. And I try to tell my kids that as they try to do their homework with an iPad below them, looking like showing a video game and then a phone over here running Netflix. Um, all that makes is for thrashing to disk, in my opinion. Hmm. Uh, I, uh, that, that's a challenge for me. I bring that up. Uh, I know you've talked about that. But uh, are you using, uh, do you use Pomodoro to test this? I know a lot of people do. And you yeah. sort of mentioned some aspects of Pomodoro for that. So if you're multitasking, what you're really doing is context switching at speed. So if you and I were both given two hours to do some tasks, one person might switch every minute or every four minutes over two hours. I've got four tasks. It's going to take me a half an hour for each task. And I'm going to go and switch, 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 switch. And I'll switch like 14 times. What's the overhead of the switch? It's measurable. We don't know what it is. Could be 30 seconds, could be 10 seconds, could be a minute and a half. Who knows? I could do 10, 10 minutes here, switch over here. Oh, squirrel, look over here. Um, or I could consciously release three of those items 
sprint for 30 minutes, do one of the tasks, and then do four tasks, 30 minutes each, over uh, a two-hour period, avoiding any context switching or overhead. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually looking at a blog post of yours from 2012. And uh, you have a section here on scheduling work sprints, which you just described. Um, and you also have a section on do smaller things. What do, what do you mean when you say do smaller things? Um, the size of a task is overwhelming enough that it can cause you to do nothing. So you need to break it down to a size that isn't overwhelming. Like paint the house is overwhelming, but go to the store and buy paint is less overwhelming. So break a task into subtasks until you find a size of the subtask that doesn't stress you out and then do that. And now you've done that and then you do the next thing. So write a 30 page paper is overwhelming. Open up Word and type four or five bullet points is not too overwhelming. And then once that's done, you've already done part of the 30 page thing. And then you just keep doing those smaller tasks until you take a little bites and then you're done. Oh, good stuff. I I, um, I, th I read a book a few years ago that suggested instead of having the to-do list be the, the large task as you described, write down the very first task. Mm -hmm. So if the first task is, um, you know, on me editing this video is up upload the video to the computer to my editing computer, write that task down mm -hmm. because it might take me two hours to go through the entire process of syncing the audio, editing, publishing it to YouTube, taking out the dumb stuff I say, you know, whatever the, um, is that get to that, not only break it into smaller tasks, but understand what, what's, what's the very first hurdle I have to overcome, even if it's a tiny thing, sure. like copying a file from here to there. Yeah. I also think it's important to look at opportunities to operationalize things. If, if I can remove something. So for example, like you said, syncing audio is a task. Is there an app we could get? Is there a, a technique we could record that would not involve the audio? Like, um, here, here's the thing that I did to operationalize my life. I realized that I was mowing the lawn every every weekend, and it was doing nothing but, uh, but, uh, but annoying me. Like, mowing the lawn is a thing I have to do, and it bugs me. So I hire a kid locally to do it for 20 bucks. Yes, it right. cost me 20 bucks, but it is $20 that I paid forward for a high school kid to mow my lawn, and I don't have to think about it anymore. So sure. it's win-win, and I just gained an hour and a half of my weekend which is probably worth more than $20. Yeah. So like if you're, if you enjoy the peacefulness of editing your videos, great, but maybe you could hire someone. Maybe there's a local kid or a young person or entrepreneur in the movie department at the high school who might want to, you know, learn about editing and video production. Like there's lots of ways. The difference is though, we get our, we get used to doing these things and then they just become second nature. And the thought of setting up a new system is more overwhelming than just, just doing it, right? Like I could teach my son to, to clean my car or I go, oh, fine, I'll just clean the car myself, right? right? If you can push that, past that, that first, time, that, that, setup first time a... that first setup time. But once you do it then, like, I, like, like I, with my podcast, right? Um, getting, getting an editor on my podcast and having Mandy help me edit and produce my podcast, game changer. And now I feel like I get to focus on the content of the show and less on um, on the administration. Yeah. Um, yeah and so I know we're getting short on time here, but uh, talk a little bit about uh, effectiveness and efficiency. They sound like the same thing, but they're not, are they? Yeah, so um, being efficient is doing something really, really well but being effective is deciding the thing that you're going to do. Um, I like to use it as a terms of direction versus physical motion. So if you're like, if you're Usain Bolt and you're running, he's a very efficient runner. Yeah, but he if, is. But if he turned, if he turned 20 degrees to the left in the middle of the race and ran that direction, he might do it very efficiently, but he would be an ineffective runner oh, because he would completely overshoot and go the wrong direction. So, um, effectiveness is doing the right things and efficiency is doing things right makes sense um, before we wrap up is there anything else that you want to add or say no I'm just happy that we finally got a chance to do this we've been talking about it for a while I'm happy too as well I really appreciate your time thank you so much and you stay safe yes sir you too mm -hmm.
I really enjoy using technology to stay in touch with friends and to lift friends up, and that's the whole point.